thank you for joining in thank you for joining in and welcome to the session on groom and bloom mastering corporate elegance i am preeti bhastrin lead corporate partnerships at aspire for her at aspire for her we have a vision of adding 1 million women into the workforce by 2025 and we are working towards motivating women to not just enter but also stay in the workforce and today we have a community size of 3 lakh plus and it's great to see uh, you know a lot of you who join us for you know a lot of the sessions in uh, earlier and it's great to see the expectations that you come in with for this session so we'll get started and let's talk about the topic so you know corporate grooming so why why is it that corporate grooming is so critical right so apart from your usual work related skills and you know the work that you do in your organization it's also so important to have grooming and etiquette because they do play a vital role in one's professional growth they reflect professionalism they reflect attention to detail and as well as the respect that you have for the work environment so today's session is extremely critical for each one of us here and i'm sure all of you have been eagerly looking forward to this session so let's get started and before we start there are certain housekeeping rules so do let us know that you're here by participating in the polls and asking the questions that you may have you can put down the questions in the chat box either during the session or when we are doing the q and a which is towards the end of the session and you may want to take down a few notes so please keep a pen and paper handy and do stay on till the end so that you can have all your questions answered and we are all joining in virtually so please do bear with us in case of any technical difficulties like connectivity issues etc and please keep yourself on mute unless we ask you to unmute yourself when it's your turn to ask a question and be engaged curious and respectful and do ask any questions you may have now i would like to invite ruchita tandon chief growth officer at aspire for her to say a few words thank you so much preeti good evening everyone and i know we are all joining at 6 o'clock in the evening it's good to see the participation but i just have a question while preeti has asked why are you here how many of you think twice before you step out of the house and look at yourself in the mirror and think have i uh, dressed right a question which most women always face no matter you're just going out harshita says i do alpana says okay i just see i do's i do's okay but if you can also say that why you do is there anything that you have in the mind why this thought comes to you and today i can see two brave people who kept their videos on sheetal and akanksha and i would really like to applaud these women because this is also one of the stages okay fear of being judged says sir sir are you anybody else fear of being judged never done it but that's one's mistake pragati says better personality better presentability to look impressive okay so we do see your thoughts we do hear your fears and this is something which most of the women have and i'll also tell you it's a very common well known saying that no matter how much ever a woman's wardrobe is full she will always find it still difficult to pick up the right outfit and move out so it's not something very new there are of course ways of overcoming all of this and hence we have today our special mentor here swarnali das gupta Who's joined us all the way from Singapore? You're right. She doesn't reside here. She's joined us from Singapore, and Swarnali also has some recent attributes. Some really, uh, you know, I would say, uh, for her, what she has showcased, what she has done, which also shows that age is no barrier. But I'm going to leave that to Swarnali herself for her to make that uh, as an introduction about herself. All I can say is welcome to aspire for her platform once again, Swarnali. and the audience is really excited and i'm sure at the end of it professional grooming the fear of grooming everything is at least one notch ahead and i hope everybody is gearing up for diwali and they'll be well sorted thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you so much ruchita uh, so 
before we get started and before you know i introduce our esteemed speaker to all of you uh, we have a couple of poll questions uh, just to understand the audience a little better so requesting farisha to launch the first poll and requesting all of you to please participate so you know right at the start of the question we would like to understand how confident do you feel in terms of your professional appearance and grooming on a, a scale of 1 to 5 wherein 1 is that you know low on confidence and five being that you're supremely confident so requesting all of you to please participate okay uh, okay so see quite a few of you who are somewhere in the middle in terms of your confidence levels okay that's great to know and the other question is what aspect of personal grooming would you like to improve the most whether it is dressing professionally using the correct accessory whether it's around makeup or any others that you may have you can mention that in the chat box if there if it's any of the other options you can mention that in the chat box we'll give it like a few more seconds and uh, requesting all of you to participate Okay, so 45% of you uh, feel that your confidence is somewhere in the middle. And uh, so most of you are looking at improving your, you know, professional dressing. So that's great to know. So thank you for the inputs. Uh, I think, Farisha, we can close the poll. Okay. So moving on, today we have an expert speaker with us, Dr. Swarnali Das Gupta. She is an experienced image and potential management consultant based in Singapore. So like Suchita just mentioned, she's joining us from Singapore where it's, uh, you know, late in the night around 8.30 right now. And uh, Dr. Das Gupta obtained her soft skills and image management certification from the reputed Image Consulting Business Institute. She holds a master's and PhD degree in human physiology and has extensive postdoctoral work experience in molecular biology and genetics. She conducts group workshops and offers individual training in areas such as image building, appearance management, soft skills training, personality development, wardrobe management, guided shopping, personal brand management, and Get Globally Ready program. Her clients include healthcare organizations, corporate CEOs and executives, medical professionals, bankers, students, teachers, artists, and even families who are relocating to a new country. She has immense global exposure, having lived in diverse countries where she honed her insights into cross-cultural behaviors. She applies the best aspects of her international exposure and world-class standards to her consultancy. She has worked with clients from large MNCs and is well aware of the image, etiquette, communication, cultural acclimatization, and personality needs required to thrive in the industry. Her passion for what she does comes from helping people achieve their dreams by looking polished, feeling positive, and honing their untapped potential. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you, Swarnali, to the Aspire for Her platform once again, and uh, requesting all of you to give a warm welcome to Dr. Swarnali Das Gupta, our esteemed speaker. And I'm sure each one over here has been eagerly looking forward to this session because I'm sure all of us have a lot of things that that we can take back after this session. So thank you and. Uh, would also request you to talk about your recent achievements because it would be great to hear that from from you. Thank you and over to you. Thank you so much, Priti. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And thank you, Esper, for her, Rucheta, for coming and uh, being with us today. I, we all know how busy you are. And Priti, uh, for giving me all the support that I needed and Parisha, for um, being here and helping us. So all of you who are here today, I would have one request, if you can keep it for me, that would be great. But you know, more than me, you please do it for yourself. That is 
you open your camera. We need to see your pretty face. We need to see what's going on there. Even if you are not ready, we are never ready for life. So now this session is about corporate grooming, but as Preeti mentioned, I work on different areas. And with my life, I come from a very small town, very quickly I'm telling you, come from a very small town um, where I went to a vernacular medium school. Uh, although my dad was a doctor and you know because it is a small town i didn't they didn't send me to a bigger uh, place because we were young but nothing nothing in this world can stop you from achieving what you want to achieve my schooling is there i went to calcutta university then jadavpur university my bsc msc phd postdoctoral work I was quite a serious student. That's why I went for PhD. I thought I'm going to be a scientist one day. But then at the same time, my daughter was born and I left my career because my husband started moving around from this country to that country. I left my career. I lived around many dynamic cities all over the world. I have seen corporate world from very close quarters. And then I realized one thing that how, what are the questions that Preeti asked you and you answered? And Preeti asked you that what you want to learn. All these questions we all had, I had before. And then I have seen in the corporate world that people, even the leaders, because they are also making mistakes because nowhere, nowhere in the world, no curriculum is there in our schools, colleges, institutes, whether you are from the top-notch school of India or abroad, or you are IIT, IAM, you have learned hard skills. Nobody has taught you ever how to dress up, how to take the you know, color, which color combination. Rather, in the Indian society, especially with the middle class, if a young girl is standing in front of the mirror, appreciating her own beauty, then they said, Iska to kuch nahi hone wala hai, mirror ke samne kadi hai. If a young boy goes and you know brushes the hair, we scold them. So we are not being encouraged by our schools and society. And mostly in some of the home, there are some great parents, great caregivers. Some of you have got, but not everybody was the got the same privilege, right? So now what we have learned so far, does it mean that we don't know? Of course, you all know. But is there a structured learning happen? No, it didn't. So now I have found out, when I found out these top leaders are also, sometimes they don't know how to do a proper handshake. One of the very you know, top um, multinational healthcare giant, the, the leader, the managing director who held my hand for handshake and then he didn't know how to do a proper handshake. He, he just put, held my hand here. Why it happens? Because sometimes it happens because of shyness, holding a lady's hand, but a handshake, a farm handshake, if you can't do in the, you know, in uh, all over the world, there are countries where they will question in their own mind. They will never tell you that whether you are confident enough or not. So we don't know about this. So all these things we need to know. Now, corporate grooming is a very, very, favorite subject of mine because we all need to look groomed and why you need to look groomed are you, I'm, i can't see you are you all open with your camera or uh, you are still hiding um, yourself as i told you again please open the camera because this corporate grooming session is not only about corporate grooming you are going to get lots of support which you can give yourself and your fear of showing your face is going to go away forever. That's what I believe in. Now I'm going to bring three, three words in front of you. One is A, one is B, one is C. This is not your A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. That is childhood gone. Now you're an adult. You have to understand A is for your appearance. This is the way world sees you. As I told that, of course, you have your hard skills, you have you know, graduated, you have gone to an institute, your MBA, you have done your fair uh, share of education, you mostly all of you are working in an organization, you have your hard skill. I am talking about your softer part, soft skill, the person you are, the person you want to be, 
let's talk about it and we will talk about corporate grooming within that. So A, B, C, A is your appearance, which we need to be ready all the time, whether in corporate or in our social scenario everywhere. B is your behavior and body language. C is your communication. If you have your A, B, C right, if you work on them, then these three together will give you another C, that is your confidence. Confidence will never come just for communication because it will come, it's a holistic process for confidence. And when you will have everything, you please invest in your D. In today's world, your D is extremely important. Your D is your digital presence. Today you are working in a company, tomorrow you want to shift to another company, your future employer might, would love to see you on your LinkedIn, on your social media, just to understand you and we all do that. I'm sure many of you have already researched my name before coming and joining here, just to understand how is she, what she does. And this is very common for all of us. So now with this, I am going to show you a PPT very quickly. And then I will show you some props. Some of you talked about power dressing. Some of you said that you are not very ready to, you don't know what to wear. As the question came, you answered. I saw the poll and I wish after this, session your poll is going to change i will request Preeti to take this run this poll once again and i would love to see the result now let's start fasten your seat belt i'm going to take you for a roller coaster ride now so please pay your attention this is not my talk this is your life this is your life this is you are going to change it with your appearance body language communication little bit i will touch so i'm starting our corporate grooming session now. One. Um, sorry, let me just. There is a problem happening for me to open the. Yeah, so. You let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, yes, we can. You can, right? Okay, so today we are going to start our. Groom and Bloom, Mastering Corporate Elegance. I just loved this title which Preeti has chosen for us. Of course, we need to groom and then we bloom. And this is all about all of your blooming that I want to see happening today. Mastering Corporate Elegance. Elegance is a word I really follow. It's all about grace and elegance. Of course, we do what we do. But if we do with most elegantly, and gracefully, that puts us in a different pedestal. And why? I will show you that. Now you tell me, I want to, please all of you open your mic and tell me, I want to hear because I'm not following the chat. While eating, which side you want to eat? Which one? Left side or right side? I want to hear your right. voice, please. Or... Option two. Right one. Option right one. Option two. Option two. Option two. Thank you so right. much. We, why we like the option, option two. two? Why we like the option two? Because Anybody? it looks appealing. Appealing, looks colorful. Good. Absolutely. You are all correct. Okay. It, it looks, looks fresh. It looks fresh, colorful, appealing. So attractive. all of us. Sorry? Attractive. Attractive. Yeah. Attractive. It's also very right. neat. It's right. Okay. So okay. all the words have come from us. And these are the words we are not giving a food a chance. 
if it is not attractive, if it is not appealing, we are not touching it. So why in your corporate, they will give you a chance if you are not presenting yourself in the right manner. So attractiveness is not a bad word. We all need to look attractive. When I'm bringing this word attractive, it doesn't mean that what is my skin tone? It doesn't mean that how big my eyes or how sharp is my nose or how short and tall I am. It doesn't mean anything. It means whatever you have, how well you groom yourself and present yourself to the world so world can perceive you the way you want them to perceive you, right? So it is in our hand. Sometimes we think and we say that, oh my God, she talks to me like that. She is not liking me. There is a problem then. We have to first do introspect and see is the problem within me. So after today's session, all of you go to our room alone, stand in front of the mirror and see the person, whether you are liking that person or not. If you are not liking, you write down what you like and what you, do, you don't like. And that is you. That's your SWAT. I'm not talking about SWAT here. I'm coming back to corporate grooming. So what I'm saying, it is a holistic approach that we are taking today. It's you and your appearance is also you. Your communication is also you. The you who is working is also you. Your degrees, diplomas, also you. You have to bring it all together. You have to join the dots. And this is this session is all about. How many of you believe in this? How many of you are... We all want to impress our colleagues and bosses. We want to have a good relationship with them. And I will change the word impress with influence. If you really have well-groomed your presentation, your communication, you will start influencing people and not impress. But we all want to have a good relationship with our bosses and want with our colleagues. There are many people who have the same qualification. You are not the only one, but how I can make you stand out, how you can stand out. You can only stand out by understanding self. So see every slide I'm bringing in that very pertinent question, you go and stand in front of the, in front of the mirror, ask who you are, who you are, what is your purpose, what you are doing, how you are going to move ahead, going upward and forward. For that, what you need to do, you need to take care of your three things, as I mentioned, A, B, C. Now, first I will go, so you need a mindset shift. That school, college, institute, office, work, promotion, name, why, why, why? Take care of your A, B, C. We need a mindset shift. Two people sitting here. This is called First impression, probably they have met for the first time. Research shows that image is formed. Image means people understand uh, the other person very quickly and make a judgment. And we all do that. We also do about other people. We also do about animals. If you see a gentle elephant on the road, you would try to go and pat or smile by seeing the elephant. If you see a raging elephant with the two legs up, you will try to run away. So this is our brain instinctively work and you can't stop it. People will keep on seeing us and make a judgment about us, not negative all the time, but they do. Now it is and what they see. I'm going to tell you what they see that they make the judgment. They see these things and it is called first impression. Now from today onwards, if you are going to meet somebody for the first time, even now, whoever you are meeting for the first time, please take care of your ABC and it, you have to work on them because we have never worked on this very actively, right? In few seconds, people see all these things in you. Even you have not spoken a single word, you are already being judged. As you know, as uh, Priti has said, I have worked with senior people, vice president, CEOs. I have worked with senior HR leaders. And I asked one of my client, an HR leader, that what you see in a, in a, who is coming for the interview, do you 
do you make a judgment when they're coming from the door? And he said, yes, we don't have time. There are so many participants. So we just make a quick impression. And when they sit and talk, we just match and we see, is it working or not working? So the moment you are on the door, on your interview room, you have started becoming, being judged. So what they see, they see your clothes. And when I'm saying clothes, I'm not talking about branded clothes. I'm not talking about expensive clothes. I'm just seeing clothes. And what kind of clothes you need to wear in the corporate, we will talk about that. Second, they see how well groomed you are, whether your hair is neatly brushed, whether you have your little makeup going on, how is your skin uh, care? Are you looking clean? Are you looking well groomed? That is also taken care of. And then your body language, what is your attitude? You have everything going, but the attitude is not right. But your you know, overall body language is very close, not right. That also we will talk. Even you have not spoken a single word, these are the things people make judgment about and you also do that about other people. This is the way our brain works. Second is I'm now taking you to the full thing. It seems simple, not simple. So I tell my clients that don't run for shopping. Nothing is going to happen. First, you do a homework that what you need to shop. So similarly, here also, I'm going to take you for everything, but it's not simple, but it's doable. And it's like two plus two, four. If you get the formula, you will do it yourself. You really don't need me, but these are the knowledge sharing I'm going to do with you now. This is the way probably in your, sorry for this photograph because I couldn't find anything Indian in Indian context. So your appearance management, you just imagine yourself in that lady's uh, place, that lady standing there and all your team leaders or your team is there talking about the business, talking about your work, but they are also noticing your A your appearance. So what includes your appearance? It is only clothes? No, I'm showing you what it means. Manage your appearance, your grooming, your clothes, your body language, your, including your etiquette. It is coming in the appearance, all these things, A and B. First, I'm taking you for the grooming part. Now grooming, one part, Always please remember that your face is the, my face here. It's not because of Zoom. Even if I meet you physically and we are in person, have I in-person session and meeting, first thing we look at people's face, how the, is the face, whether I'm smiling at you, whether I'm grumpy, whether, so the body language, there is nothing with appearance. That is the body language part going on. First, are you safe in my vicinity? Am I welcoming you? Am I warm towards you? Or I'm stiff, I don't want to mix. So you are picking up and you will act accordingly. The way I'm acting, you will react accordingly, right? So now first is face. So coming back to grooming again, first you have to take care of your hair. Hair care, as you all know, we have to brush it properly. It doesn't matter whether you're short hair or long hair. Only thing if it is long, or short, you have to brush it neatly. If it is long, I will advise that you go for a ponytail or a braid or a bun that is in your corporate setting. Corporate uh, long hair, opened hair um, is absolutely a no-no. Okay, so you have to really tie up your hair. In hair care, as I'm not getting into details because of the, we are pressed with time, I really want to show you some of the clothes also. So in hair care, I have uh, spoken to a salon because I send my clients all the time and I know few people there in the market who are uh, doing extremely good work. So a salon specialist, a top one in India, has told me that every day you have to shampoo your hair, which um, sometimes is not possible. So they say every other day because our body secret, you know, our human physiology background, so our body secret sebum also sweat and sebum and the dust and the pollution and everything is mixed together it's getting stuck here we are being you know kind of it's a hot humid weather in india so if we don't clean it our hair fall will be more so they say that keep the roots healthy that is one point i need to mention here that every alternate day is shampoo recommended by the hair salon specialists that is your hair part 
coming to the makeup and skin. Now, this, first of all, I want to show you this right side photos where you can see that um, this lady, this is a Harvard Business School and uh, research with Procter & Gamble. They're uh, a big uh, MNC, as probably you know. So they took one lady and they did a research by making this lady with no makeup. First photo, second photo is little makeup. Third photo is moderate makeup. Fourth photo is full makeup. And then they asked few corporate executives that whom amongst them for you are going to hire. And the answer came the lady with moderate makeup and why. Can you just guess why? Can you just open your mic again and can you tell me why she was chosen amongst these four photos of us? Any idea, anyone? Because she's looking beautiful. She seems perfect. Sorry, I didn't hear you, couldn't hear you. She seems perfect. She seems perfect. Her makeup correctly brings out her features and okay. it makes her look good. That makeup, yeah. the, um, no, it, it's not too much on her face. Okay, the third one, yeah? Okay, one, so yes. we, yeah, we all more or less guessed that, but the unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, that answer was, it's not because she is looking beautiful. This corporate executive said that they can pick her up to work for their organization, and why? See how our brain changes the word, changes that makeup they have done, and they are really looking beautiful. She's re really looking beautiful there, but they said, no, she is looking competent. She is looking trustworthy. And that's why they have picked her. She got the maximum vote. So when there is a makeup going on, not full makeup in the corporate, the corporate makeup as I call it because I teach it. So corporate makeup is where you are not showing your naked skin to the your colleagues or in the corporate. Because we are not children anymore. We don't have the children's skin anymore. We have blemishes, we have sunspots, we have some marks. And it is okay. This is all, you know, I, sometimes I say, okay, all these my aging marks are there and it talks about my experience. Now, if you want to think it in that way, you please go ahead and think it. But if you have a little bit of makeup going on, you look more polished. You look more sharp. You look, your face doesn't, your skin doesn't look uneven. So all these benefits are there. So I strongly, as an image consultant, I strongly advocate that you must go for very light makeup and highlight your features like your eyes and lips, not together, not much because it's, your professional setting. If you do much, then again, people will not take you seriously in the corporate. That also has a negative side of it. So little bit must, you should use makeup little bit. You can use CC cream, you can use BB cream. You don't have to use foundation. You can use a little loose powder. You can use a compact powder. And depending on your skin tone, skin color, you use the lipstick, which is has to be very a uh, soft pastel color, pink or light brown or pinkish brown or peachish brown kind of a lipstick. Okay, so that is the makeup part. Now I'm coming to the skincare part. Skincare is extremely important. How many of you have heard of CTM? Do you know what is CTM? Cleansing, toning and moisturizing. Absolutely. Cleansing, toning and moisturizing. This is the thing first going for you. This is the first thing we have to do, whether you do makeup or not. This is your morning, evening routine. You clean your face with face wash. If you have makeup, you can also use makeup remover. Then your toner has to go because all the face washes, they, they open the pores. You have to close it with the skin pores then they, you have to close it with the toner and then your moisturizer to keep the skin moist. But the most important thing in this is your sunscreen. Please save your skin from sunspots and the sunscreen, again, uh, one of the top Dharmat of India has told me the sunscreen has to be 50 plus SPF. 20, 30 doesn't work for our weather. So this is what I wanted to share you on skincare makeup just a little bit. Now we will go to our 
next slide. Now we are coming to the thing, dress to impress, what to wear, how to wear, how can I wear this? How do we know that this is the color I can wear? This is the fabric I can wear. This is the pattern I can wear. So I'm going to take you to all this and I will show you some of the clothes which I have kept to show you. Now dress to impress and what you wear in the corporate setup. First of all, you have to please note down these four words I'm going to give you today. It's a part of your appearance management. Four words. First, you need to look appropriate. Whatever industry you work in, different industry has different norms. If you are into investment banking, with for investment bankers, most of them wear white shirt or a jacket or a suit. So you have to be appropriate for your industry. If you are in the media where there is no such norm so people wear different kind of things but it has to be appropriate now appropriateness is extremely important we see indra nui here the ex-ceo of pepsi cola as you all know and then there is a homemaker now indra nui also has a family now when she's at home she's not wearing this jacket she is not doing the power dressing and then as a homemaker when you are at home with her family then i'm not saying that you just go straight to your pj there is also another kind of clothing we call it casual at home you can wear a pajama you can wear a t-shirt you can wear a loose dress there are different kind of clothings but we are keeping it into corporate grooming so i will talk more about corporate clothing Second is authentic. I'm not telling you to wear all these kind of dress to your office. What I want to say that all of us, how many of us are here, Priti, today, now? Uh, we have about 110 plus. Fantastic. The, now we are 110 uh, people here right now. Now all of us, if I can put you into different rooms right now, I only need six rooms because we all have different personal style so different style means somebody likes pink somebody doesn't like pink somebody likes red somebody doesn't like red somebody like darker colors somebody like pastel colors so in this way i can categorize all of you into only six groups and when you will be in your own group you will think oh my god she's just like me why because her personal style and your style is matching and this is the way if you go to a big party or if you go to a function and if you meet someone and sometimes I think, oh my God, she's exactly like me. I would love wearing what she's wearing. That means your personal style falls into the same category. Sometimes we judge or we pass comments on someone who is dressing very weirdly. But from today onwards, please don't do that. In that this way, that's their personal style. Now I can take um, Ranbir Singh, as you know, sometimes she wears skirts, sometimes she wear, he wears sorry, skirts or different kind of dress. What I, We have seen her, him doing that, but that is the personal style that person has. And that also is a category. Probably not many people in this category. Many people are in the classic category, but we have different styles. That's why I want to show you and tell you, remain authentic to your style. Remain authentic. Authentic means what you like, you do, but you have to see whether it is working in the corporate or not. That I am going to uh, discuss with you. Now, attractive, as I said, that attractive was in our Indian society. Initially, in our time when we were growing up, our society has changed now, was not a very you know nice word. Somebody who is studious is nice. Somebody who is intelligent is nice. Somebody who is attractive, it's okay. That means that person probably doesn't have brain. It's not that anymore. And this is such a great and big news. So looking attractive, again, I'm saying it doesn't matter what is your skin tone, what is your size, and what is your features. It matters. You present yourself. You groom yourself. Do the skincare routine. Do a little bit of makeup and look attractive. Now, how do you know how you look attractive? There are three things I will bring in here. One is please consider 
you must know what is your face shape. You will look attractive if you wear your hair, if you have a haircut, or if you wear your jewelry as per your face shape. Otherwise, that attractiveness doesn't come. If someone who has a round face, I'm just giving an example. Probably in, we will do a jewelry session later on. I will give more information on this. With a round shape, if you wear a round earring, you will the you are adding more roundness into your whole uh, face. So in that case, probably we have to give that person an angular kind of earring. So you choose your jewelry as per your face. You choose your sunglasses and glasses as per your face. To that will make you look more attractive. Of course, the other attributes are also there, your behavior, that also is adding. Now I'm talking about the appearance here. Next is your affordability. Many, many uh, my, of my clients whom I have met, especially the younger ones, feel that if they can buy that Nike shoe, they will look more smarter. Or if they can buy that Zara top, they will look smarter or they will be happier. Or better brands like other big brands, they will be uh, they will look more beautiful, more attractive. That is not the case. You can wear a simple sari, still you can look attractive. You can wear a white t-shirt or jeans, you will look attractive because attractiveness is coming from other things. You wear anything you can look attractive and then it has to be affordable to your pocket. You please don't go over budget. Everything is available if you have the eye for it and if you know what to pick up. Now, affordability is a big thing which we all must understand. And uh, if you have to look attractive, you can be affordable and look attractive. Being authentic, as I said, that you please express who you are. Nobody is stopping you. Nobody is, you know, don't be fearful about anybody. This is you. This is your life. Only you need to know what, how you do the right thing. Now, after affordability, there, these four A's, I want you to note down. First, what we said first, can you, anybody tell me? The first one is? Appropriate. 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 Appropriate authentic. Appearance. Attractive. Authenticity, attractive, and affordable. Affordable. Yeah. Affordable. So affordable, depending on your budget, you can get anything you want. You can create that look. The basic must-haves, I have not taken Indian dress here because Indian dress has lots of dresses to show. So I am just going for uh, our basic trouser and shirt and top. Now, three things, please uh, remember. I am giving here three colors. These are the basic outfit. Anything basic means you can wear it again, again, and again. And if you are, you are never going to get bored about on basics because you can top up basics with other things. You can add a jacket, you can add a top. That skirt with that little black dress that dress is not really little. It's quite a long knee length dress. You can wear a top and with a belt, you can make the bottom part look like a skirt. So you can really can play around with the uh, basic things. Now in basics, I'm showing three colors here. Please remember there are three colors, which we call neutral color. Three colors. One is black, one is white. Another one is gray. Gray, I'm showing a tan, light brown pant here, but the gray, these are the three neutral colors. But I will show you there are other colors which we can use at neutral color. Why I'm talking this neutral color? When I'm saying neutral, neutral color is the color for the corporate or professional setup. One, who the overall whole color, you go to any store and you see all the colors, you can divide the colors into two zones. One is neutral, another one is accent or bright colors. Now in your wardrobe, if you go back after this session, you will see there are two kinds of colors. One is neutral, that is more muted colors, like white, black, gray, light brown. I'm going to show you the colors. Another one is very bright colors, like red, like blue, like green, like brighter colors. So corporate is 
professional setup is neutral colors. You, you will never look very well groomed in the corporate session if you wear a very bright chatak pink or, you know, that grooming doesn't come with the color. So every small, small things you need to control to look more groomed. These are the wardrobe neutrals. Wardrobe neutral colors are used for corporates. Now you can tell me, what about I like pink? What about you like blue? Of course you can wear, but as I said, suppose you when you are going to the shop, you have to pick up the color, which is more muted, which is not very bright. Then that color will can be fit for your, as your corporate color. I hope you have understood this. Now, navy blue, brown, these are typical corporate colors, but if you have a meeting, I insist, please remember color has a psychology. If you have a meeting or a, you are going for a top level meeting or you are going for a big meetings of your life or your big presentation, try wearing neutral colors on those days. The other day you can always wear some pastel color. Of course you can wear but the brighter color and more darker colors is seen psychologically as more matured colors. That's why black suit is the most you know, authoritative outfit in the corporate world, a black suit with a white tie. Now these are, I'm saying you don't have to ask yourself now, but you can ask all this question as I'm showing you many colors and you are understanding now you can find out. Are you, be, um, are you okay? Can you understand that there are some colors which are brighter and some colors which are more muted, more sober? Those sober and muted colors are your corporate colors. The more brighter colors actually do not work in the corporate until and unless you are going for, there is a party, office party, or that also I will say, just don't go overboard in that. With the color, I will bring in another thing here that your outfit, whatever you are choosing, has to be as per your body shape. Suppose again, I'm giving an example here. I have seen Indian ladies like all of us, a little, not all of us, like generally Indian ladies are little bottom heavy. The bottom portion is heavy. If it is like that, then you have to make it look like an ideal, ideal uh, body shape. If you want that, then your shoulder portion is narrow. So you have to wear something more embellishments on the, sweat, on the shoulder part or you go very neutral and darker color on your bottom part. No big print should come in the bottom area. Otherwise, it will be more highlighted. It will be more it will attract more eyes on that areas which we want to camouflage. It is all about how you camouflage some areas and how you want to more make some areas more prominent. So you balance. Now, these are the patterns. I have brought some patterns which are usually used in uh, India. So I have given uh, some cross somewhere which means that these patterns are absolutely no-no for your corporate setup. Now, when you are going to buy a clothes or what you have, because you want, you don't know what to wear. So please pick up those patterns, which are wearable like polka dots. Now, why I, this, you can see the polka dots, the middle one, this is small dots that can be, is corporate uh, friendly. The big dots are usually, we say you try to avoid because it, is uh, quite distracting for the eyes. Now here, uh, there is a floral, just next to the word pattern, there is a floral. Any small florals are okay for the corporate setup or your professional setup. But if your floral shirt is very big, bright, bold, bold floral, just below the polka dots I have given one, that is absolutely a no-no for corporates. On the right, left-hand side corner, there is a cow print. If you know Masaba Gupta, she does lots of these prints and lots of copies are also in the market. Of course, they are fun for social setup and you're going out with friends and everything you can always wear, but not in the corporate. That is not a professional pattern at all. So what is professional pattern? Anything, when I'm saying pattern, I mean print. We, we say print, right? So anything 
which is classic pattern. What are classic patterns then? Pinstripe. I didn't give it here. Pinstripe is a classic pattern. Any stripe, elongated stripe is a classic pattern. If you are on the shorter side, and if you want to make your torso longer, you wear more thin, but horizon diagonal, not sorry, vertical stripes. Vertical stripes we will make your body look more elongated. Horizontal stripe will make your body look more wider. So you choose accordingly to your body type. Now on the left side, I have given down left. I've given this small prints, which we get to see in India. This is called fuller. So you can use these small prints on the upper right-hand side. We can use this. Even the right-hand right -hand side corner down, that marble print, that is an abstract print. Abstract also you can wear in the uh, corporate setup. There are small, small geometric prints can be worn in the corporate setup. The checks I have, you can wear small checks. But the big checks are absolutely, or brighter color checks are actually no, no, because you, the focus has to be on you. Your clothes and your color and your patterns should not overpower your body. Your, your whole persona, your face, everything, and the way you speak and think, that has to be the focus. The rest of the things are supporting you. I will show this. Uh, what are the styles later on? There is one thing we call it international style scale. If you understand that, then it will be very easy for you to choose your clothes every day. Now, before going to this, I want to, this is, okay, now let me finish the PPT, then it will be easier for you to see. Now, only appearance will give us all the elegance that we are talking about. Is it will give us all the grooming we are talking about. Absolutely not. It is all about also our communication and our behavior. As I said, our B and C. But before going here, I just want to tell you one thing on your appearance. You are here to up your game on corporate grooming. You have to look credible, capable. You have to look office-like in your dressing and you cannot afford to look unproductive and you will look unproductive if you really can't put it well together and you know some people they just mix any color with anything that cannot happen so you have to understand the color there is a thing called color wheel you can choose the color from here you don't have to buy it it is there online in google you can uh, download color wheel. You can choose the color from here. And depending on our skin tone, we choose color. I wish I could meet you all and I can tell you that what color you can wear or what is the particular you know, silhouette you have to choose for your body type. So then that you can do yourself. Uh, or if we meet again, I will do it for you. Now coming back to communication. Communication, first thing in communication is listen. I'm going to listen to you when we will do the question answer. I will see that what kind of questions you are doing so I can answer them. So listening is the first thing. When you listen to someone, you are already a winner in that person's life because that person has told you her or his problems or the way they are thinking. The way So they are thinking that he was someone who is investing your time to them. So listen with, we call it active listening, listen carefully and paraphrase. When you listen, sometimes I'm telling you that you please respond to me. I want to hear from you. So it's a communication two-way street. And it starts with listening and you paraphrase, you ask, oh, you told me this, right? So that means you mean, you mean to say that it happened to you in this way, right? So that means that you are telling the, person who is the speaker that yes you are respectful you are listening and you that's why you give some cues so if a speaker is speaking to you or your boss you try to give some soft nods 
So these are the positive cues the speaker gets. That's why I'm requesting you once again, you please be ready for your next Zoom meeting with your camera on. And it doesn't matter how you look. You, of course, you will now know you groom yourself, wear your proper clothes because life, more you will be visible, more you are going to move ahead. More you will be heard, more you are going to move ahead in life. In your corporate career, in your social life, finding friends everywhere, it is very important. That's why I'm saying be ready. Be ready because you knew that today is a Zoom. So be ready for that. Open your camera, ask your question, wrong, right, whatever is coming into your mind, that is your question and I will value it. Second is care. So you have to show that you care. You know, a recent research has told, Princeton University research has shown us that that three to five seconds, the five first impression is being created, that has come down to 100 millisecond. Not even a second. In 100 millisecond, people are judging us. Like somebody sees you and thinking something about you and what they, what they judge. They judge whether you are attractive or not, whether you are likable or not, whether you are aggressive or not, whether how is your moralist competence. All these things are people judging and these research are coming up day by day. So time is very short for all of us. If I get one minute, in one minute, I have to create an impression in your mind. I have to show that, okay, this is the things Vanali knows. This is the knowledge she has or she doesn't have. Either way, because you don't have time for me. Similarly, in the corporate world, you please do the right thing because every, everything, every day, all your efforts are being seen. And on that basis, you are moving ahead. You will, you will. So do not insult or put down that we know, but we do it sometimes through our words, through our sentence, and most importantly, through our tone. How many times have you heard, you know what, you told me this thing is right, but your tone is not right. Your tone is not good. So tone is that how much emotions you are attaching to that word. When you are angry, that is an angry tone. When you are submissive, that is a submissive tone. When, we, when you are probing, that's a probing tone. So there are different tones. If you are respectful, there is a respectful tone. So now what kind of tone you need to bring? So people can come to you. They know this is a safe space. They can talk to you. You will not insult them. You will listen to them. You care for them. All these things are showing you are a good, well groomed communicator. Okay, and then pause. Why we pause? Because we I want you to reflect, reflect what I said. So whenever he was speaking in the in between, you pause for a while. Assertiveness is one thing, this is a huge topic which I teach in communication, but I am I wanted to touch upon on this. You are how many of you can say, can you open your mic again? Can you tell me how many of you can't say no? Can you say no to a person directly or do you have trouble saying no? Sometimes, sometimes we have trouble, have trouble saying no. Yeah, so, so sometimes we all have trouble saying no, but we have to find out a way how we can say no. Because if we can't, if we do something which we don't like, Especially, you know, sometimes it happens in the corporate. So we have to really put our ourselves also there. Otherwise, the resentment keeps building up. Suppose somebody tells me something I couldn't give. I couldn't talk to that person that I didn't like it. Sometimes we can't say that. When we can't say it, in the meantime, when we come home, we are not happy. We are sad. We are restless. And then we feel that, okay. And then that takes us towards anger. We become angry because we can't say that thing which we want to say. So there is a way of saying things. So to disagree with someone doesn't mean you have to be rude to that person. You can be a gentleman. You can show your gentleness to that person, but you can stick to your point. And there is a way of doing things. It is called assertiveness. So that we all need to learn as much as we can learn. It is better for us. Uh, sorry, Swarnali, uh, just a quick time check. 
Uh, yeah. We are at 7 p.m. right now. So, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So now this body language, uh, I'm taking quickly. So you can see these three words. One is, the, this is your B. I told about appearance and body language and communication. I told communication first. This is your B. Can you see the three circles are three different sizes? And that there is a reason for that. This is words are least important. First importance goes to, this is again a research done by Professor Albert Mehrabian. And he is a professor of psychology in UCLA. He was... And he did this research and he found out 55% of our personality, people will like us or not, or our communication is attributed to our body language, our smile, our eye contact, our posture, our gesture. You have fantastic appearance, your clothes and your grooming going on, but your posture is not correct. Your posture is not erect or you not doesn't sit properly. That is a absolutely... Uh, no, no, in corporate grooming. So your sitting, your gesture, the way you stand and your voice tone, your words, everything matters, but body language 55%, 38% your vocal communication tone of your the language you are speaking and then the words is the rest of the percentage. Now I'm taking you quickly. These are the nonverbal communication. We all do that. We stand, we sit. Every time the way we do it, uh, we are sending some kind of signals to the other person. And this is just, you know, what overall nonverbal uh, communication I talked about. First thing has to be your smile. It instills trust in the other person, your eye contact, your gesture and posture. You know, if I sit, stand like this, I was using my hands. If I just speak like this, then you will feel that something you are not getting. So when I'm speaking the words, I'm reinforcing with my hands. And this is a part of your body language. So I think with that, all this thing, ABC, if it goes correctly, there is no way you will be not confident. The power of confidence lies in dressing well, with your healthy body, posture, open posture, you know, as we say that palm is open and confident tone to increase your feeling and to say that you are in control. With that, I'm ending this, but I'm going to show you my, uh, all the quickly five minutes. Um, so I'm, stop I'm stopping uh, this. You have all my coordinates here please uh, connect me on linkedin i have my whatsapp number going on here you can get it from Preeti last uh, later uh, now i want to show you one thing how you are going to choose your corporate dressing first of all this is a round neck blue color this blue color yes it is good for corporate wear but this is round neck Round neck is the most casual neck. Most casual neck, but many of us ladies, we wear not round neck. A V neck is actually better than round neck because it has angular line. I have a V t-shirt uh, t here. See, this is V. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes. It is yes, it's slightly blurred. But it's okay. Visible. okay. What I wanted to show you the V here. So V means you are seeing this straight line and an angle is created. Any clothes when you are going for your clothes, you check in your wardrobe or you go for shopping later. Anything which is a V or angle or straight line is more for corporate and round neck is more casual. But we wear because we don't get all the clothes the way we want it. That's why, um, but fabric wise, of course, this is jersey. So jersey is not a corporate, a professional uh, fabric. So wear more anything, cotton, or sometimes the cotton is very hard to maintain. So any synthetic also, depending on you have the air conditioned in your office, you can always wear it. Now a blue, um, I am showing you blue, but I, what I want to show you, Although this is round neck, but this is more formal because this is full sleeve. Please note this thing. 
more sleeveless you are, more body is not covered is more informal. More body is covered is more formal. The most formal uh, dress is a man's suit. I said black suit because black is the most formal color, but a man's suit, that is a trouser and a jacket, which is the same fabric. That is the top level formality. You want to know what is formal? That is the top level formal. Now, all the time we can't wear jacket, right? So sometimes we wear business casual jacket. What is business casual jacket? When your trouser and your jacket is not matching, but you can always wear it. I will tell you that whatever job you are doing, if you need to go to a leadership role, or if you're eyeing for a leadership role, if you're going for a meeting or for an interview, invest in a jacket. Keep it, you don't have to wear it every day, but if you wear a jacket, that is, we call it third layer. You are adding another, uh, another layer of garment and that will make you look more credible than just wearing a top. Okay, now this is absolutely no no for corporate. Uh, the sleeveless, I don't know if you wear sleeveless in the corporate, it sends a different message. Anything which is uh, no sleeves is not for corporate. That is the norm. Now we break the norm sometimes, that is a different thing. Some uh, industry also they don't follow these, but Corp, but the professional grooming, it would not look professional. If you want to look professional, all small, small things together will make you look professional. Now, a shirt, again, a white shirt is uh, important to keep in your wardrobe because it, with it, you can wear any trouser, any dress um, can also, you can wear a sleeveless dress and you can keep the shirt button open and you can wear it in the casual setup. I, as I said, that polka dots is again a V-neck. I can't, I don't know. The V-neck polka dots is again a very wearable corporate top. You can invest in that. See me here. Can you see now? Yeah. So when you will buy something or what you have, whether it is working for corporate or not, two things you see, whether the fabric is very pliable, not very uh, see-through kind of, of course, you know that it will not work. So lines, if there is a straight line, like this white shirt has a straight line. When I'm saying straight line, you struggling to show you. Yeah, so this 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 straight line I'm talking about, this straight placket here, anything with color. And again, the color. Addition of a color means you are more, little more formal than without color. First is your, suit uh, matching suit then is your business casual jacket which can be semi-formal then your collared shirt is more formal than your round neck now if you have to come go somewhere you have to wear a formal clothing you please wear a collared top or a shirt and shirt is more important than a top because in top you will not get that color so with the shirt and as I said that, you know, sometimes I have seen ladies and they ask me, that's why I'm showing you that is a, is a the shrug like that, can it work in front instead of a jacket? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So if you do, if you want to invest in a jacket, please invest in a jacket like this, where again, you see the straight line and the collar is not full collar, but we call it this, you know, little up collar here, not little notch, mandarin collar line, but the full jacket is this black colored one. This, can you see this? Yes, the typical collar uh, with a lapel. Lapel means the collar. So anything with a collar is most formal, even in your top. And regarding the, Regarding the jewelry, just quickly, Preeti, I'm taking just quick time. A gold ball or a pearl, what I'm wearing is good for your corporate jewelry. Now, if it is hanging, if it is hanging, then it is not working for corporate. Until and unless you, it's your birthday or there is a function, then you can wear something very small hanging, like something like this or something like very not a long hanging thing doesn't work. Also, stones don't work much 
it's metal for a corporate. Gold is the most formal metal. After that is silver. And the stones like this looks very pretty, but is not really for the corporate setup. Any stones, which is, and anything which is like hanging like this is anything hanging, anything making sound is not corporate. -y. So please don't avoid wearing all those things. So with your little makeup going on, with your hair neatly done, with your four A's power of personal appearance, I told you, and the clothes that I'm trying to show you, I don't know how much you can see. I think um, you will be good to go. You'll be confident. You'll be more confident in what to choose. Now, with that, I am ending my session and I would love to hear from all of you. Any question, just please ask me. Thank you so much, Swarnali. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions. Uh, so I think I can see a question from Tejaswini. Would you like to unmute yourself and ask a question? We would uh, encourage you to ask the question yourself. Uh, Tejaswini, are you there? Uh, so, Sarayu, would you like to ask your question? Sarayu, would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes, Preeti. Uh, can you be elaborate on uh, Indian clothing? The, so far, I have heard about uh, all our all were Western. Yeah, about yeah. sarees yeah. or kurtis. Yeah. So, so the Indian clothing, I had something, anything. What I said that India, I told you the color. So, uh, Sarayu, the color you have understood the corporate, uh, the professional colors that can be neutral color. I talked about. Yes, Vanali, I got the yeah. colors. So, yeah, so any color, any salwar suit and straight line I talked about just now, anything which is straight line with those kind of color zone, color family is good. You can wear it and not much embellishments, not with much embellishments, anything you can wear depending on your body shape. Now, you with salwar suit or sari also, cotton sari is the most uh, appropriate for corporate wear or any sari which is a handloom is more appropriate and of course people wear synthetic saris anything but neatly pleated not the sari the way we wear in the, in the social cinema. and the uh, i had i kept some of the diwali because diwali is coming and priti told me and our corporate uh, this so grooming yeah. session uh, if i can show you some diwali color diwali uh, kind of or function or anything where i tell you to avoid many blinks and glitters something like this which is a sober color if you can see can you see it uh it's it's on and uh, off it's kind of blurred so okay i mean so in the middle now? yeah 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 can you see yeah. now See, when I'm doing, uh, when I'm wearing something with this kind of motif or this kind of yoke, I'm keeping the color very sober. So now if I wear the same thing in a bright red, bright blue, it will be too, uh, not really uh, appropriate for corporate. So even with this uh, festivities, you can wear something little uh, the in the festivity mood, you can wear some kind of, gaudy salwar suits or the saris but you keep the color more sober because you're going to the office and office is in the daytime in most of the places so according to the day variation also you keep the color sober this is the one thing coming back to sarayu's another question sarayu when you are going to wear your salwar suit for the corporate um, corporate uh, setup or your professional setup please remember two things one, I said straight cut, not flared umbrella cut. Straight cut is more, you will look more sharp. So power dressing, somebody said, power dressing is all about wearing tailored clothes. Now, all the time we don't go to the tailor, we buy it. But your body, it, it has to be fitted to your body, not much volume anywhere. So that increases visual weight. If you wear a big salwar kameez with lots of flair, 
that will add extra weight on your body, which we none of us we want. With the with the trouser and top, with the Western wear that doesn't happen. With the Indian wear, because there is so much of variety, we keep making mistakes by picking up the right thing. So try to wear something straight fit, more fitted to your body. You can use this uh, dupatta on one side or some, some salwar suits, they don't use dupatta anymore. And your churidar, the plazo is not very uh, corporate again. Anything else? Uh, uh, there's a question from Nirmala. Uh, Megha, can we take Nirmala's question first and then we'll ask your question? Nirmala, if you could ask no, your I question. Uh, yeah, sure. Megha, Thank you. If you could just give us a minute. Nirmala, if you could ask your question and we'll yeah, take sure. another two questions because in the interest of time, uh, we'll we'll take another two questions. Yeah, Nirmala. Please. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the wonderful session. Um, I, I would request you if you could give us a few tips about how to select a footwear, especially okay. uh, to go with the Western wear. Thank you. Thank you for this question. It's a very common question for my clients. Uh, there is a top bank in India, they told me, the HR head told me, Swanal, you take the session, but please start with footwear because I am so fed up to see these wrong footwears in my office uh, where people uh, wear it for their comfort. So coming to this uh, with the Western wear, any footwear where the your foot is covered or the feet are covered, that is a closed shoe like a ballerina, that is the most ideal one. Whether you wear a little bit of kitten hill, as we say, not many of us don't wear hills much because of our you know back problem or um, our commuting problem. So you can wear a you can wear a ballerina shoe. That is the most uh, most uh, I will say formal looking. One thing I want to mention here again, depending on your comfort, the more pointy is more formal. More pointy, more angle is more formal. I'm bringing two things here time and again. One is straight line, one is angle. In your clothes, in your footwear, in your bag, in your even accessories, I'm not taking even in your bag. And more pointy, more formal. You can wear rounded also. That will make you look less, uh, make you look less, uh, that is more blunt, you know the rounded one, and that is more sharp. You will look sharp if you wear sharp, simple as that. That is the one, or you can wear sandal. Any strappy sandal is also good for cartridge wear. Not, not a slipper, not a slipper, a sandal with a strap. Have I answered your question, Nirmala? Yes, you have. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank so we'll you. take the last question from Megha and we'll Okay, I will I will just take one question which is there. I can see there in the chat, which is very important because there is a question by Pragati, is ankle leggings professional? Pragati, not any kinds of leggings are professional. That is, please note it down, many or one of you, all of you. Leggings is one thing which is very casual and nowhere I have seen anybody to wear leggings except India. Leggings, I don't know who has started it, and it is very comfortable, I understand, but it is not at all professional. It will, won't create that professional, you know, more accomplished look, which we are looking for. Yeah. Yes, Megha, you can ask your question. Uh, good evening, ma'am. This is Megha Kar from, uh, uh, presently I am studying in Manipal uh, Engineering College in, that's in uh -huh. Ma Mahe, Karnataka. So uh -huh. I'm doing an engineering course. So ma'am, okay. basically I wanted to ask, like, I've never used a dupatta in my life. Like I, whenever I use it, I, I fall in, in the chaos of using it. Yeah. So uh, how and when to start, start it, using it, like, you can see me yeah so megha actually uh, there is no news there is no use to i mean if you don't use it you don't have to use it it is not adding any other formality to your whole dress so your if you are wearing the salwar suit without the dupatta salwar suit of course you understand it has to be modest 
as I say that I have seen some of the ladies wearing very tight dress for something which they are thinking that will not make you look more professional, period. Now with dupatta, without dupatta, a tight dress is no, no. So we call it that you have to have a ease. There should be a half inch gap between, not very frumpy, then you will look, not look sharp. So there will be a half inch gap between your clothes and your skin. So dupatta, okay. if you, to you, you don't have to use, that is not a mandatory thing. Mom, actually, I'm interested to use the patta. So oh, you interested? Oh, okay. So then, always whatever the salwar suits you have already, you can always have a matching dupatta and a cotton dupatta is more formal than the chiffon dupatta. Anything heavier yeah. is more formal, more professional. Anything lighter, anything transparent is not formal. Even with dupatta, is the same thing. Okay, anything ma else, big, huh? Ma'am, like, uh, uh, my favor is coming right now. So it's this day after tomorrow. Okay. What's what's that? I didn't get you. My farewell. Farewell. Oh, farewell. Okay. You want to use a dupatta in your farewell, I mean, with your salwar suit? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I just wanted to ask, uh, like, ask you, like, how how is it, like, uh, like I'm wearing this sari. So... Okay. Uh, I just want wanted your uh, suggestions on this and my blouse uh, backside is v-neck. Okay. <laughs> Megha, are you only able to... I can't see you actually, you know. There are uh, not all the faces are visible here. So, uh, I can't see you right now. So, okay, okay. So I um, can't can someone... Can the host pin me? Uh, Megha, uh, I request you, you can put down your questions and email it to us. We will come back to you. Uh, you know, we are short on time. And, uh, you know, since this is primarily uh, also corporate grooming um, session. Just one, last, one last question I want to do this add-on. Uh, it was my first question, but I didn't, add, I didn't ask that. Ma'am, actually, in my farewell, so what is the current trend and what is the current, like, uh, the... What is the most, most Megha, Megha, for... shall I tell you one thing? Megha, the hairstyle, I can't see the hairstyle you. I'm asking, ma'am. The hairstyle. <laughs> Megha, I can't see you. Megha, I can't see you. First of all, I told you hairstyle is depending on the face shape. I wish I could see you and tell you. But what I want to tell you that you don't do drastically something different. Because that no, will... No. Uh, so the, you you can always go to a parlor. You can do a nice blow dry. I don't know what is your hair length. I need to know certain things before I reply to your question as you are understanding. It's a group setup. Um, I mean, later on, if you, as Preeti suggested, that you can ask your questions. But what I can tell you that whatever your best salwar suit you have or you want to wear a sari, you said, sari. You wear your sari. You can wear some nice jewelry going with it, matching, not too much. Don't wear too much. Mm -hmm. And second is you can go for a light makeup. Light makeup again, as I'm saying, because you are still a student, although you are a passing student, but and you're, you go for a nice blow dry, they will shampoo and blow dry your hair. I'm sure you will look lovely. Thank you, Megha, for your question. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Megha, and all the best to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. I will take this question. As I can see, Preeti, is it better to keep the nail polish free? We can't keep it perfectly polished. Absolutely. Uh, Sunita, you are bang on. Uh, this question, Sunita Simon, you are bang on. Don't wear cheap nail polish rather than go nail polish free, but keep uh -huh. your nails. Uh, actually, ma'am, I... I see that your nails are very nicely polished. So the oh. thing is, actually, I have noticed it. That, um, but the thing is, like, most of us can't keep it perfectly polished. So, um, I mean, is, is there a way to keep it perfectly polished like yours, but still keep the polish on if, if we are still at home washing the plates? Because we are, yeah. like, you know, like housewives yeah, at home. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, it is, it is. There is, uh, because, you know, I work with uh, different clients. <laughs> So I talk about grooming, I talk about clothes, I talk about uh, everything from nail polish to lipstick, everything. And then mm -hmm. uh, depending on my session. So this, the nail polish which I'm wearing here is we call it gel polish or hard gel polish. There are nail parlors where they do only nails. They do this kind of polish which will stay for one month until or one and a half months until I take them off. So but does it stay even if you wash plates? 
you wash a thousand plates, it will stay like that. But okay. you have to think uh, many times before doing it. If there is occasion, if there is a function, you can always go and do it. Once you do it, if people say different things, but I have been doing it for last 10, 15 years. So I'm very happy with it. Yeah, okay. it looks Thank well groomed all the time. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Swarnali, we really need to close the session. So, yes. I'm requesting Farisha to launch the last uh, poll question, requesting all of you to, uh, you know, uh, participate in the poll. Uh, so, you know, we asked you this question before the session as to how confident you feel in terms of your professional appearance and grooming. So, we would like to know, I mean, how has it changed after the session? So, please do participate. Great oh, to see oh. Uh, yeah. you know a lot of you in four and five so yeah. thank you requesting all of you to participate uh, and hope all of you had a great session thank you so much Swarnali for this really enlightening session it was a very very interesting session and we can see that you know a lot of them uh, were really interested and had a lot of questions thank and you. one thing that you know I really picked up in terms of you know the overall session was that you can't climb the ladder of success dressed in a costume of failure so that really sums up the whole session thank you so much uh, you know for uh, giving such detailed information on you know a b c as you mentioned it's something that will stay with me as well and uh, thank you for taking out time for this session thank you all for joining in hope all of you have taken taken down your notes and we will soon join you with another session have a great evening thank you we can thank close you. the poll uh, Farisha and we can close the session thank you thank you so much Varnali. Thank, you. thank you so much thank you everyone for joining and thank you I'm so happy to see the result it has gone to 5 and 4 and um, I hope to see all of you again thanks for joining again thank, thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you. Mom. bye thank you thanks everyone